Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I will be casting paper flowers in epoxy resin along with an old photograph of my wonderful dad for an absolutely beautiful finished effect. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. The mould I'm using today is from Let's Resin. It comes in a set of two and the other one is a rectangular one. I'm going to be using a photograph in there and so I need a template. And so what I did was I got a little bit of acrylic paint. I painted it around the edges of the mould and then printed it onto some cardboard and cut it out. And then I had a template exactly the right size for my photograph. The photograph I'm using is one of my dad when he was a little boy and I really love this photograph. I've printed it onto transparency film in my laser printer. If you don't have access to a laser printer you can use an inkjet printer but you will need to seal it first by spraying it with varnish. I would do three coats or you can also laminate it if that's what you would prefer to do just to stop the resin coming into contact with the ink because it would probably run all over the place but because an, a laser jet printer uses toner that's fine in the resin. Anyway here I'm just using my template to draw around the heart onto the photograph so I know where to cut it. Unfortunately my photograph wasn't really big enough to fill the heart but that was okay because I decided to fill it up with flowers around the outside so you can't tell in the finished piece. Once the picture was ready it was time for the epoxy resin. My resin is from Let's Resin and it's a one to one ratio by volume and it's all mixed up. It was a bit of a guess how much I would need. I've mixed up enough for a layer at the bottom of the mould and also for the stand and it worked out just about right really. To start with I added a little bit of resin at a time just to cover the surface of the base of the mould. I didn't want too much right at the beginning, just enough to cover it because if there was too much under the photograph it would have ended up being too high and my flowers were quite deep. They were almost deeper than the mould and I wanted to make sure they were right down as deep as they could go. So I just put in a really thin layer. And once the resin was in I used my hot air gun just to go over the top and get rid of any bubbles that had appeared at the top. Once that was done I carefully placed the photograph on the top and the good thing about it being on transparency film is you can see through it and if there's any air pockets trapped underneath you can tell but if you're careful when you place it on and let it just find its own way onto the resin you shouldn't get any pockets of air trapped. Right, let's start with the paper flowers. Now, these flowers that I'm using today, I've had them for years and years from when I used to do a lot of paper crafting. I used to love using paper flowers, so I've got an absolute load of them. So I can't direct you to the exact same ones, but I will put a link in my description of some mulberry flowers which are similar. Anyway, these, like I said, are quite deep and they, I didn't want them sticking out the top of the mould for obvious reasons. So I did squash them down as much as I can, could without spoiling them and then placed them into position. I've gone for quite neutral colours. I didn't want anything to distract from the photograph and it was a kind of sepia colour, the photograph. So I've kind of gone with those neutral colours to go with the sepia in the photograph. And after I'd laid a few of the flowers out I realised I really needed some resin on top of the picture as well so that's what I just did there and then I just continued with the flowers I had to cut the wire off them obviously and just place them until it looked right once I'd finished placing the flowers, I took a sheet of plexiglass that I had handy, still with its protective film on, and just placed it on the top. 
the reason for that is because I didn't want the flowers to float up. I wanted them to stay in position and not stick out from the surface of my finished piece. So yeah, that just kept them in place nicely while the resin cured. So the next day when it was cured, I added more of the resin and I filled it up to the top this time. Now, when you're using flowers in resin, whether it's paper flowers, real flowers, silk flowers, they will all give you bubbles in the resin. And that's because there's so many little folds and nooks and crannies in there for little pockets of air to get trapped. So whatever kind of flowers you're using, you will still get those little bubbles coming out of them. So you really do need to keep your eye on it after you've poured the resin. I actually sat with it for about 45 minutes I think it was after I'd finished pouring and every few minutes new bubbles would come out of the flowers and I would use my heat gun on them to get rid of them but obviously you can't sit with it forever can you and some did appear after I'd left it but we'll talk about that in a minute so yeah you do need to babysit it for quite a while after you've finished pouring Okay, the next day it was ready to take it out of the mould and I was very excited to see how it would look. Now, you will see in a moment that, like I said before, there were a couple of bubbles that I wasn't happy about, but also the flowers had stuck out the top a little bit in places. So, although I really loved it, I did um, sand it with my electric sander off camera on the top just where the bubbles were and where the flowers were just pr protruding a little bit and gave it a top coat which you'll see soon but I did love it and the other thing was I loved the way it was see-through but you could only see the picture if you were looking up close which isn't really good if you want it on display so with a white background it it was better, you know, when I put that paper behind it just then. It was much better with the white behind it. So I decided to put some white resin on the back. Some I just did UV resin because it's nice and quick. And I just thought the picture would show up better that way. And so that's coming up in a moment. And here's the base. I love the base for this. The way you can stand it up, on the heart up on this base is just so good. It looks so nice and it really catches the light beautifully. So yeah, I was happy with that. So let's see what I did next. So before dealing with the back of it, I sanded the front. I thought it would be better to get that done before I did anything to the back. And as you can see, you can't see anything now. But once the resin goes on there, it will magically reappear. So there's no problem there. And it only took a couple of minutes. So I don't mind taking that extra step just to make sure it's just right. So for the back, I'm using UV resin because I thought... You know, it's nice and quick. And the thing is, the back of the heart wasn't flat. You know where it had been in the mould and the weight of the resin had gone onto the mould? It was kind of domed. So I knew that if I tried putting epoxy resin on there as a top coat, it would just run right off the sides. And I didn't want that. And UV resin, you can quickly put it under the light when it's on and without worrying about it going down the sides. That was the theory anyway. Let's see what happened. Right, I've got white powder mixed into my J Diction UV resin and it was time to put it on. Now, I think really I, put, I poured on a little bit too much and it started moving more quickly than I was ready for because of, you know, like I said, it's kind of domed and it was just rolling to the edges. If I'd have realised just how quickly it was going to move, I would have put a barrier on the edges with some tape just sticking up at the top to stop the resin going over the sides, but I didn't. 
I don't know why, I just thought it would be okay. I thought it would sit at the edges, I'd put it under the light and that would be fine. But it did start to run over the edges and I had to, you know, wipe it all off and clean that up afterwards. But anyway, it was fine in the end. And I actually ended up doing two coats after the first coat and I realised that it was all running over the edges. For the second coat, which I didn't film, but I did put tape around the edges to form a barrier to stop it rolling off again. So, yeah, I did this twice, but the second time I did it more sensibly. Right back to the front. The front was nice and easy because it was completely flat, especially after the sanding. And I got rid of those bumps from the flowers where they were protruding. But the big bubble that was really annoying me still was under the surface so I got my little hand drill from Let's Resin which I've only just received recently so it was my first attempt using it and I just made those places where the bubbles were into bigger holes so that when I put my top coat of resin on there the resin would go in there easily and you'd get a much nicer finish without those big annoying bubbles in. Once I'd finished drilling all the places where I could see those surface bubbles, I gave it a good wash and I even scrubbed it with a toothbrush to get into all the little cavities in case there was any dust in there and then mixed up my resin and here I'm just using a little disposable micro brush to apply resin directly into the holes just because when you put your resin on top, if I just poured my top coat on, it would possibly get more air um, stuck in there so I just find it if you prime it first with some wet resin into those holes before pouring the rest of your resin on you get a much better finish so that's all I'm doing there so here comes my favourite bit where you magically see the picture of my beautiful dad coming back to life oh it's just magical I think this demonstrates really well that you don't have to do really careful sanding. You know, however badly you've sanded something, once you put that resin on, you can't see any scratches or, you know, sanding marks at all. It just comes magically back to life and it's beautiful again. So anyway, I've poured it in the middle and when I'm doing the top coat, I always just pour a puddle in the middle and tease it to the edges very carefully so that it doesn't roll over the edges. And if your surface is flat, unlike the back of it, which we won't talk about, <laughs> it should sit in position absolutely perfectly and there won't be any problems and it did it was fine one thing I will mention I don't know if you've noticed but when I was pouring the resin you could see that there were a lot of micro bubbles in there but I have to say this because it's so important to me that resin that I'm using from Let's Resin is absolutely beautiful resin the problem actually isn't the resin my room was very very cold and although I'd put it in a warm water bath to warm it up first both parts you know both the bottles it was still a little bit bubbly and that is just because I didn't warm it up enough it's nothing to do with the resin from Let's Resin which is one of my favourite resins. One of them. I do like quite a lot of resins, I've got to say. There's some really good ones out there. Anyway, it was easily rectified with my heat gun in the end. And as you can see, that annoying bubble that was there before is no longer there. It's filled up nicely in that hole that I drilled and it's gone. It's filled with resin and you don't see it anymore. So I left it till the next day before I handled it again and then it was ready and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think the paper flowers worked really beautifully. I'm really happy with those. And the good thing about the paper ones is they keep the colour so nicely. A lot of the time when you dry flowers, they fade quite a lot. But with paper flowers, obviously they don't. I know it's no comparison to the real thing, but I do think they look beautiful. So what do you think? Are you going to have a go with paper flowers now? I hope you are. I hope I've inspired you. Anyway, that's it. We're finished. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.